I'm using Prussian blue and Venetian red. You can use any two colours. The reason why I've chosen those two is because I thought they mix well, quite well together. Um, but you could use cadmium red and Prussian blue as well, or ultramarine and burnt sienna. Use your two favourite colours, but have one colour that can create darks. And that's what the Prussian blue can do. So as you saw there, I started off with painting a very pale wash of Prussian blue at the top part of the sky wet in wet. I'm now mixing the Prussian blue with a pinch of the Venetian red to get a little bit of a grey blue colour and I'm painting the water area in the foreground wet into wet. Adding a little bit more Prussian blue, less water this time with a little bit of red and painting a darker wash right in the foreground there. So the colours pale as they go into the distance to create depth. I've just swapped to a slightly smaller brush. I'm actually using goat haired brush. Any sort of soft haired brush will do. And I've mixed up some a slightly thicker Prussian blue painting this damp into wet with this one inch brush. And I've decided to tilt as well to create some atmospheric effect. I quite like the photograph because it's sort of the buildings are small. I'm going to show you a really easy way of painting them as well but it's all quite atmospheric and soft grey colours as well, the little bit of warmth here and there. So I'm just using a flat one inch brush here and just painting in some reflections, damp into damp. And I'm mixing up a little bit more Prussian blue, slightly thicker now, and painting damp into damp, just this stronger tonal value, just sort of at the water's edge there, sort of just in front of the buildings. So this is all damp into damp. So wet into wet moves more, damp into damp. It stays there, the paint stays there, but you get a lovely soft edge. So I'm just blending there with my one inch flat brush, left and right of the water's edge there. A little bit more dark as well in the foreground, blending as I go. And as you can see, there's a lovely shine on the paper because the back of the paper is still nice and wet. So the paper isn't drying out too quickly. And this is really helpful, especially if you're a beginner starting out in watercolor. It gives you more time, especially working in the wet and wet and damp into damp techniques. I'm using a plastic card here. It's an old bank card that I've cut up into little squares. And I've dabbed my card into the blue and the red there to sort of blend them together. And I'm printing this sort of damp paint onto the wet or damp surface here. So the paint's not running too much because it's quite creamy. And this is straight from the tube. Um, the surface is in places like in the right here. It's still quite wet. So you've got to kind of be a little bit patient and wait for the paper to not to dry off so the, the shine of the paper goes you still want the shine there but you don't want it too wet you don't want to be sort of painting or printing with your card into a puddle so just be patient and wait a little bit longer you can also vary your colors as well so I'm very I'm using a little bit more Prussian maybe 80% Prussian with 20% red and, and then maybe 50-50 of each colour. So really sort of change it up so you get a variety of colours. So I'm just sort of printing in, I think this is Jetty here on the right hand side, damp into damp. And I'm using the card to sort of swipe with, but also to print with as well to get thinner lines. And it's really fun to do. And I would advise as well to have a practice on a scrap of paper, the back of an old painting, just to build up your confidence. But it really does make painting lots of buildings, complicated buildings as well, easier. So I'm actually going to use my spritzer bottle here just to spritz off the paint here on the end. I made these buildings too tall. It's just to show you can change things when you're using the card. So I'm just lifting off with a clean damp brush just here and there to get some of the light reflections in the water. So it's quite effective. You may have to go over the same mark because sometimes the paint just runs back in on itself, but it can be quite effective and create some lovely atmospheric effects. To get a damp brush, just rinse your brush with clean water and take the excess water off as I showed you there with the paper towel. And it acts almost like a sponge and it just takes off the paint and you have to kind of repeat this by rinsing your brush again and taking off with the paper towel to keep the brush clean so you get these lovely light reflections. 
So there's still a shine on my paper. I'm going back in with my plastic card with thick creamy paint straight from the tube, mixing the two colours together and changing the direction as well, making some buildings thinner, some wider, some shorter, some taller, really mixing it up, mixing the colours up. It really does make painting buildings so much easier and so much more fun. And just using two colours also makes things easier. And having the back of the painting wet makes it easier too. Now, something I am doing a little bit different here, I am actually painting on a larger sheet of watercolour paper. That's one of the reasons why I wet the back, because sometimes when you work on a larger sheet and mine's 300 grams, you'll get some warping. And this way, wetting the back of the paper stops that warping. And just as I say, gives you more time. I believe the buildings here on the right hand side is a place called Copen Hill, where is, there is a ski slope and a large recreational hill. So it's quite an amazing place. So I've just, they look like tall chimneys there. So I've just popped those in and I'm using really thick, dark paint here to paint some of the sort of darker buildings there, especially on the left. And there's a few on the right hand side and those buildings will be nearer to us. The buildings way off in the distance, I'm going to make those paler and smaller to create depth in my painting. And I've just put a few reflections in there on the left hand side, damp into damp. I had a few spots in the sky and I'm just lifting off again with a clean damp brush. And again, using that clean damp brush just to lift off a few more reflections here and there. And I just wanted to show you, if you're not comfortable with using a plastic card, you can actually paint with your brush, of course. And I'm using the brush, the flat brush here, a little bit like how I was using the card, sort of applying the paint, printing marks, using the tip of the brush and or swiping with the brush to create larger marks. Again, lifting off the light in the water with a clean, damp brush. So instead of applying paint with the plastic card, I'm now lifting off because the surface is damp. It's not too wet and I'm swiping off the paint, either using the corner of the card, which is what I'm doing there, or the side of the card, swiping off larger areas. And again, you may want to practice this, but it is fun to do. My biggest piece of advice is swipe once. If the paint runs back in on itself, leave it. Don't keep swiping because you could end up damaging the surface of your paper. So as you see, now, I'm just swiping a little bit in the distance there, pulling down to create lighter looking buildings. So it's like a magical effect. You're almost sculpting your buildings. That's why I love this technique. It's so effective. It looks quite modern and industrial here, doesn't it? So I, there's these tall buildings here um, on the left hand side. I've swiped off quite a lot of paint and now I'm printing back a little bit as well to create some darker windows. And once the painting is dry on my second stage, I will be adding some details as well. So I'm just swiping and sculpting. I'm not trying to copy the photograph, just the sort of general shape of it. I want my painting to be creative and to give an impression of this view, not a sort of a photographic likeness of it. I'm using the photograph as a source of inspiration and also a reference. So as you can see, I'm just having fun. And the other thing you can do is cut your card up into smaller pieces to sort of swipe and lift out smaller areas. You get better control that way as well. So I'm just lifting off here and there in the distance, the smaller buildings here a little bit to the right as well, using the corner of my card, swiping off some light reflections as well.
So as you can see here, I'm adding more paint here to the right hand side. So you can always add more even after you lift off to add some more darks and mid-tones. And remember to try and sort of vary the colours, even though you're just using two. So I am just printing this pole here with my plastic card with a little bit of reflection as well and painting a few more reflections to the left. And I think it's a good idea now to allow my painting to dry. Now, sometimes your painting can warp after this stage. So it wasn't warping while I was painting, but you can see it's very curvy and warped here. One of the things I find really helpful for me is I iron the back of the painting. I have used some paper towel underneath the painting just in case it gets any marks on it. But it really helps just smooth the paper out ready to paint my second stage. So here is the painting a lot sort of flatter and easier to paint on. So I'm going back in with a plastic card. I'm dipping it into the wet paint and I'm printing onto the dry surface now to create the look of windows and some details on the buildings. Now the paint doesn't come off that well, but it comes off enough to create that impression of windows. So the windows and on the buildings in the distance make them smaller and slightly paler and the ones closer a little bit darker and bigger. So I'm just going to spend time now printing my windows and remember in watercolour less is more so just give that impression and don't try to overdo it and leave something for the imagination. I always like to get a bit inventive when I'm printing and, you know, using all these yummy techniques. So these are called keys, wooden keys, and they're used to actually help stretch the back of box canvas paintings. Now, you might not have these, but you could use some other little sort of lolly sticks or, you know, a little bit of a more plastic cards, thicker card, etc. You can get quite creative. And please share your ideas as well in the description, any sort of ideas for printing and making marks because that's what painting's all about it's all about making marks now i'm printing here white gouache you can use white watercolor i've squeezed it out and i'm actually tapping this little wooden key here i'm using the side of it the corner of it to create a variety of different marks to create lights so it's literally white paint going on to some of the darker areas as well to get back maybe some light, but also some reflections in the water, some light on the side of the buildings, lighter windows, etc. It's really quite nice to do. And as you can see, I'm sort of rubbing along with it there as well, scrubbing it into the watercolour paper. I'm using Arches 300 grams watercolour paper. It's a rough surface and has created some quite nice textures here and there so I'm just adding some reflection here light reflection in the water underneath that pole and I'm adding a little bit more here in the distance and I'm using a clean damp brush just to soften some of those whites here and there just to blend them into the water especially to make them look like soft lighter reflections
just finishing off those reflections there and I'm going back to this little wooden key just to add a few darks and details here and there on the buildings pretty much wet on dry to finish off this sort of semi-abstract loose watercolour of this view of Copenhagen which has been a joy to paint. I love using just the two colours, wetting the back of the paper on that first stage. And then the second stage, just adding darks and details with a few highlights here and there. And I've really thoroughly enjoyed this painting. I'm just signing the picture to finish off. And here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it inspires you to maybe get a larger sheet of watercolour paper, wet the back, paint wet in wet using the plastic card technique and just working with the two colours and just two stages, finishing off with those darks, details and highlights using white paint. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you'd like to get access to my exclusive weekly watercolour tutorials, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy semi-abstract painting. Bye for now.